All right, floppy catters. I would prefer to do this as a live video on Facebook, but my Wi-Fi doesn't really work well when we get outside, so I'm gonna do it on my phone and then I'll post it on Facebook and on YouTube. So these are my ragdoll cats, Charlie and Trig, and it's about 40 degrees in Kansas City. This is, that's where we live. And I let them out once a day. I stay in the backyard with them. My backyard's completely fenced in. Trig has never tried to leave the backyard. Charlie has tried to leave it going after a neighborhood cat. Uh, but in general, he does not try to leave. It's a, It's been a random occurrence and I was able to get him both times, so I'm not terribly worried about it, although I'm sure I'm gonna get comments about it. Now, um, the whole me letting them outside thing is very controversial because supposedly ragdoll cats aren't supposed to go outside. Um, one of the reasons is because of their docile nature. They wouldn't be able to defend themselves. You have to take into account like where you live, um, your cat's personalities, how you feel about them, how you feel about the whole concept. Uh, before you make a decision for your household. Lots of breeders say that not to let them outside. Charlie and Trig's breeder know that I let them outside. Um, and a lady in Texas told me one time that she saw her neighborhood cat be picked up by a hawk or an owl and taken off and eaten. That would suck. So, um, you know, I like I said, I live in Kansas City and we don't really have that situation here just because of all the trees. Um, yes, we have hawks. Yes, we have owls. I've actually had barred owls in my um, trees. I've lived in my house for 10 years and I had two barred owls that had their babies in my trees for like eight years or so like that. Um, and they never ever bothered the cats. And part of those eight years was when my old man Rags was alive. He was like 18 or 19 at the time. And um, I called Operation Wildlife, which is an organization here on the Kansas side. Um, Kansas City's in Missouri and Kansas, so that's why I said on the Kansas side, that um, takes care of injured wildlife. And I asked them, you know, should I be worried about the owls and my old cat? And they said, well, how much does your old cat weigh? And I said, well, he's a long haired. I'm always trying to come up and say hi. Hi, baby, you're so nice, thank you. Um, I said, well, he's a, an, a long haired rag doll and he used to weigh 13 pounds, but now he weighs 11 pounds. And they said, yeah, we're probably not gonna bother him um, because of his size to them. He looks like he weighs a lot more than 11 pounds because of his fur. And that's barred owls weigh between, I think 11 and 16 pounds. So they don't want to try to conquer anything that's more than they weigh. So they never ever bothered rags and he was around their babies, which is like even more reason for them to bother him and they never did. So, and they've never bothered Charlie and Trig. When I did, when their babies are learning to fly, they would fly, whoa, hi buddy. Um, he does that a lot and that's why I wanted to film today because he's gonna be frisky because of the uh, <laughs> this is what he does he hauls all the way around the yard um, I wanted to film oh there he goes wanted to film because I knew he'd be all over the place <laughs> please run up the big one please don't ah he usually runs up the big one okay we'll go back to Chiggy uh, I lost my train of thought Anyway, I'm not worried about the hawks and the owls. We've been doing that. There's seven. We've been doing this for seven years and not had that sort of a problem. And I think it's because I'm outside with them and I live um, in a neighborhood that was built in the 1940s. So um, it's kind of midtown urban area now than it would have been in the 1940s. Um, I've actually really appreciated the fact that they are used to going outside in a lot of circumstances because they're very comfortable if um, they're in a situation where they're outside and also um, 
I, you know, if they're ever let out by accident, then I think that they could do pretty well um, until I could get to them. Now, other people that have seen me uh, let them outside on YouTube or on Facebook, because I take a lot, when I'm out here by the, with, with them, that's when I take a lot of my videos and, and photos because of the lighting and well, because I'm not doing anything but watching them. Um, a lot of people have decided to try to let their cats out and then they decide, then they figure out that the, that the cats are begging to go outside every day. And so that's the downfall is, you know, if you make a commitment to it, then you got to make the commitment to it. Uh, I watched Rags again. Um, he was such an old man, but he loved going outside every day and his daily walk around my yard, I think helped him, um, you know, process um, <laughs> dumps and stuff like that. Please run up the tree. Ah, dang it. I've been trying to get um, him running up this tree on film for my sister because I've been telling her that he'll run all the way up the tree. <laughs> so when I saw Rags do that for three years because he lived in this house with me for three years, I decided, you know, I'm going to let my next cats out if they want to do that. But I can tell you that it's can be pretty annoying sometimes uh, and then also people have left reviews on my um, my book on Amazon saying like don't trust this woman she lets her cats outside and nowhere in my book which is it it's uh, a ragdoll kitten care guide bringing your ragdoll kitten home do I talk about or suggest or I don't know, encourage you to let your cat outside. So it's such a bizarre thing um, when people leave a review on a book like that because the review is for the book itself. It isn't for um, what I choose to do with my cats. And that's why I wanted to start this video out explaining why I've chosen this for our lifestyle, but that I don't advocate it for everybody else. It's a personal decision um, based on your experience and your level of comfort. And I also heard from readers whose cats are eaten by coyotes. Um, so <laughs> it can be a bad thing for sure. And I, um, I, I always ask for, for protection um, from what I believe in. So I hope that we continue to get it. <laughs> and they just, I mean, their joy is completely worth it for me in these situations. Love, you want to say bye? Oh, you got something on your ears? The chiggy's in the background. Bub, Morsi, go get chiggy. Go get chiggy. Go get him. Bye, guys. We'll see you next time.